Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS North America YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing you a motherboard overview on our brand new Tough Series uh, Sabertooth Z87 Series motherboard. As also part of this video we're actually going to be talking about a new uh, Tough Series motherboard and that's going to be the Griffin Z87. So while we're not necessarily going to be calling out every single uh, point of the actual Griffin SKU, which is our new Micro ATX Tough Series motherboard, uh, all the features, the functions, the overall design considerations and pretty much the kind of the whole ethos of what we're going to be discussing in relation to the Sabertooth Z87 series motherboard will be applicable to the Griffin. And we'll do a little bit of recapping at the end of this video to give you a little bit of perspective on if you're going to be considering either one of these boards, how they might be falling into your build considerations for a Z87 enabled system. So with that, like always, we're going to go ahead and cover uh, the accessories that come included with the motherboard, the features, the functionality, the general topology, and of course, build considerations. So with that, let's first go ahead and take a look at the accessories that come included with the Sabertooth Z87 series. Okay guys, so we're just going to quickly cover the accessories that come included with the board. We've got uh, two sets of uh, two SATA 6G cables, so a total of four. We then have two uh, assist fans, one for the CPU zone, another one for the GPU zone. We have a removable fan filter that works in conjunction with the CPU zone fan and it fixes here to our IO shield. IO shield of course is padded like always. We've got two Q connectors, one for the front chassis leads, another one for the USB. We then of course have an SLI ribbon which allows you to go ahead and uh, make connection for two GBUs. We then have our optional temp sensors which we'll go ahead and cover more when we touch on the layout and the feature set of the board itself and the thermal armor design. We then of course have our setup guide which contains all the information on the features, functions, and uh, setup configuration for your Sabertooth series motherboard. Make sure to check that out. We then have our accessory installation guide, which this gives you information on how to set up and configure the assist fans for the thermal armor implementation. We of course have a cool little stickle right here that allows you to represent Tough Series motherboards. We of course have the support installation disk, which includes all the drivers as well as our AI Suite 3 software package and also comes included with the Thermal Radar 2 software. And lastly from there, we've got a certificate of reliability for all our tough components such as our chokes, capacitors, and MOSFETs. Make sure to check this guy out, it's uh, pretty cool information. So that wraps up the accessories that come included with our Sabertooth board. All right guys, so now that we've gotten the accessories out of the way, we've got the Sabertooth Z87 series motherboard itself. So like always, of course, the first thing you're gonna see right off the bat is the thermal radar system. And we've actually gone ahead and made a, quite a number of enhancements to the thermal radar design for this generation. And we'll definitely talk about that once we actually jump over to the topology. But, you know, first and foremost, what we wanna give you guys is a little bit of perspective in terms of the, some of the key hallmarks of where Tough has. And that's gonna be some advanced cooling technology, such as the assist fans that we place into the GPU zone, as well as another one that's underneath the thermal armor uh, for the CPU zone or for the VRM section, as well as, of course, the thermal radar system in itself, which is independent of the thermal armor. And what we mean by the thermal radar system is that there's actually hardware ICs, uh, actually little thermal zisters that are sprinkled throughout the entire motherboard that give us a full temperature map real time that we can see within our thermal radar software, which is part of our AI Suite, AI Suite 3 uh, software package. Of course, we also maintain all the tough rated components, which you can see not only from the high performance capacitors that we have on here, the inductors that we'll be able to show you guys some uh, nice little shots of, as well as of course, components that you don't even see like our high performance MOSFETs. So we're gonna go ahead and touch on each one of these points as we go ahead and go through the topology and the layout and the feature set and connectivity of the motherboard. So first and foremost, we're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, the general layout and the connectivity that we have on our Sabertooth Series C87 motherboard. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump to the connectivity that we have on our Sabertooth Z87. So from the top here, we have an eight pin CPU power connection. Right next to that, we have an assist fan connection, and that's going to be for the VRM uh, fan that we have here inside of the thermal armor itself, or it's also coined our CPU zone cooling configuration. Uh, right next to that, uh, we have a three four pin uh, PWM fan headers. Now these fan headers all like all the fan headers on our motherboard are fully controllable, not only in the UEFI, but in our software package. And they also support the control of DC, pan, uh, DC fans, uh, or some people refer to them as three pins. So both four pin and three pin fans are fully supported across all the headers here on the motherboard. Uh, in addition to that, our CPU primary fan also has a special depression switch built into it, uh, which we'll be able to show you guys a little bit tighter shot of it later, that allows you to go ahead and 
connect a fan and allow it to automatically detect whether it's a DC fan or whether it's a, a PWM based fan. So it's a nice little touch that we have there. Now moving past that, if we keep heading over here, we've got some additional connectivity as well as some buttons. So one of the buttons is going to be uh, the MemoK button. That's a quick one-stop button to allow you to go ahead and be able to resolve memory related issues when your system is posting up. Just go ahead and depress it, make some adjustments, and whether you're adding more memory or mixing and matching memory or potentially have memory that's failing, a lot of different variations that occur, but uh, at least an easy mechanism to hopefully allow your system to get back up and running so you can get access to your data or at least maintain some stability. Uh, right above that, we have an LED that works in conjunction with three other LEDs on the board, so a total of four LEDs that are part of our QLED diagnostic system. So one for the DRAM, one for the CPU, one for the graphics, and one for the boot device. This will allow you to actually go ahead and have an LED that comes up, lights red, uh, when your system is having an issue initializing uh, one of those points when you are attempting to start up your system. So that's a nice little touch you have when building. Uh, directly below that, we of course have another four pin PWM fan header, which supports three pin control like the rest of them. 24 pin power, uh, primary motherboard power connection. Moving past that, we've got a front right angled USB 3 header. And from there we have eight serial ATA SATA 6G uh, connections. So the board supports natively six um, SATA 6G ports from the PCH, as well as two SATA 6G ports from an AS Media 1061 add-in controller, and uh, the USB 3 port along with the two port, excuse me, the four ports that are on the back of the board, all support our advanced USB 3 boost technology for improving performance for storage related devices. So from there, if we take a look here at the bottom row connectivity, we of course have all our front chassis leads. So this is gonna be for your power button, reset button, power LED, hard drive LED, things like that. Right next to that, we have a direct key button. The direct key button is a great hardware oriented button if you want a one stop shop and being able to reboot directly into the UBFI. You don't have to worry about hitting that F1 key or that delete key. Just press that button and reboot straight into it. Of course, if you have your system already installed of a chassis, that button doesn't do you any good. So we have a special header that allows you to go ahead and instead of making connection to the reset header, you can take the reset cable, plug it into that, and turn your front chassis reset button into a direct key button. So even if installed the chassis, you'll have a one-touch function to allow you to reboot straight into the UEFI. Moving from there, we of course have uh, a couple of additional uh, fan headers that we can see there. Plus, we have some optional temp sensors. Now, if you remember in the accessories, we noted that the board comes included with multiple optional temp sensors. You can go ahead and connect it to each one of these headers, a total of three, and you can run those headers to anywhere you want. Maybe it's one over the primary hard drive that you have or the primary SSD, maybe on the back of your GPU, or maybe affixed to a certain port in your chassis. Uh, this is gonna allow you to go ahead and have full real-time temperature monitoring through our thermal radar system and give you even more control and flexibility at how you tune and monitor your system in terms of, of course, thermal response to how you have your fans mapped out in relation to what you might be monitoring with the optional temp sensors. So a nice little plus point that we have there. Uh, of course, right above there, we have the CMOS battery. Moving past that, we've got two front USB 2 uh, internal headers. So, so that would be for like your front USB 3. Uh, of course, from there, moving past that, we've got a TPM header. Uh, we, of course, have a power LED, clear CMOS jumper. Uh, then we also have another chassis fan header. And then we have our HD audio connectivity. Now, our HD audio is enabled by a brand new ALC 1150 audio codec which fully supports DTS Ultra 2 PC and DTS Connect sound technologies. We'll touch a little bit on that when we, of course, get to the audio connectivity. So moving up from there, uh, we can see lastly, in terms of the uh, slot expansion, uh, we have a by one, a by 16, a by one, by 16, by one, and by 16. Now you can see these actual slots are covered. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna talk to you a little bit more in depth in relation to a brand new feature that we have as part of our thermal armor design, which is the dust defender implementation. But before before we jump into that, uh, to course clarify in terms of the PCIe electrical allotment that we have, uh, like all Z77 boards, 16 lanes, so you have full by 16 support here, or if you're going to run Crossfire and SLI, by 8, uh, by 8. Uh, by eight Gen 3. And lastly, of course, this slot would be dependent on the number of adding controllers you're utilizing, as well as what you have it set for inside of the UEFI. Uh, so that goes ahead and gives us a little bit of breakdown there. Next up, we'll take a look at the thermal armor design. All right, guys, so uh, jumping over here to the thermal armor system itself, we've gone ahead and made a number of different enhancements for this generation. So first off the bat, you can actually see right here, we have what's called our, our flow valves. The flow valves are a great addition in terms of being able to control how we uh, adjust airflow in relation to the primary portion here of the VRM heatsink section of the motherboard. So we can go ahead and either uh, turn them off or turn them on. So that maybe allows for if that I have my front top 
uh, fan set up as an intake and drawing air in across the VRM section, I can go ahead and adjust it that way. Maybe I want to go ahead and maximize airflow being brought in by the assist fan that we have integrated here in the back plane, whether it's an intake or an exhaust. Uh, we have a lot of flexibility at how kind of this can be tweaked and tuned based on your thermal environment, uh, your chassis configuration, and even your airflow configuration. So that's essentially one new addition that we have here within the um, thermal armor and specifically the flow valves. So we of course maintain the assist fans that we've had in previous generations, one being here for the GPU zone and another one being here for the CPU zone. Now these are fully controllable inside the UEFI as well as within our AI Suite 3 and thermal radar software. And so of course that's gonna allow you to maximize direct airflow for each section in relation to the motherboard. And keep in mind that of course that directly underneath the thermal armor system we have a full shunt based design that allows airflow to be directed to key points that we would like it to be uh, in, in, uh, we'd like it to be uh, moved towards. Now we also of course have the thermal radar system built underneath that which works in conjunction with all the fans that we have attached on the board to be able to provide optimal cooling in relation to whatever is being monitored temperature wise. Now lastly we have a couple of new additions in terms of our protective design implementation uh, that we introduced previously, but for this generation we've really expanded upon it, and that's going to be uh, with our dust defenders. So you can see that here not only in the dust defenders for the DRAM slots, for the serial ATA ports, for the front USB, even for the PCI Express slots, and you'll see that when we talk about the I.O. backplane connectivity, it even extends to that. And of course this is a really great option in terms of helping to protect all those critical I.O. points that you have on your system from any type of uh, particles and things building up, whether it's dust, debris, dander that can sometimes cause short uh, contact issues, initialization problems, anything along those lines. So it overall helps to improve the long-term reliability and even the durability of your product. Now we've got one other big addition for the thermal radar system which is going to be on the back plane. But before we show you that, there's one last thing that's sometimes hard for you guys to see and that I'm going to go ahead and show you with actually a previous generation board where we first implemented uh, convection holes. And what we actually have is our special holes that are on the PCB that uh, allow actually air to pass through directly uh, from one side of the board to the back end of the board. And this allows actually the board to receive additional cooling directly and helps us to reduce onboard PCB temperatures. So this is another way that in terms of the whole ethos of what Tough is about in terms of advanced cooling and monitoring, you're really getting that attention to detail in terms of what we're bringing uh, to the Sabertooth series of motherboards. So before we go ahead and jump over to show you what we have uh, that's new on the back of the board and the I.O., we lastly want to touch on some of our tough component quality here. So of course we continue to utilize ultra high-end uh, capacitors. So for this generation we have brand new Nichicon GT 10K rated capacitors. We have super high performance alloy based inductors and of course high performance based MOSFETs that are underneath there. So that gives you great thermal efficiency, long term performance and great power output. Now while the Tough series isn't necessarily focused at overclocking, uh, you can definitely feel that supremely confident in its overclocking capability and the power output capability of the board. Along with any other Z87 series motherboard, you can definitely feel that regardless of what Haswell chip you go, whether it's a 4670 or 47. 70K, you're going to get great overclocking performance. So with that, let's go ahead and jump over to the back I.O. All right, guys, so jumping over here to the I.O. section, you continue to see that, of course, we have our dust defender on every single one of the I.O. connection points, so that's a nice touch that we have there. Uh, from the top here, we, of course, have four USB 2 ports. Directly underneath that, of course, we have our uh, CPU zone, our VRM assist fan, which can be installed in either an exhaust uh, or an intake-based configuration. We have our USB BIOS flashback button, when which used with the corresponding USB port, allows you to go ahead and take a USB flash drive to attempt to directly recover or update the UEFI. No CPU, no memory, no graphics card required, just PSU standby power. We then have uh, four USB 3 ports, so that's actually going to be these two right here along with these two, and those fully support our USB Charger Plus technology, which allows you to quick charge, let's say, an iOS device, an Android-based device, e-readers, a number of different things, even when your system is in sleep or hibernation or even powered off. Plus, you got USB 3 boost to allow you to maximize storage performance. From there, we have two eSATA 6G uh, base connections, non-powered, so that's a great option for you guys that are looking for high performance external storage connectivity, and they also are fully supporting uh, boot, so you can run external OS volumes from them. We then have full-size DP and HDMI connections, which are great if you want to go ahead and utilize the integrated iGPU and run multi-monitor configurations. 
Um, from there, of course, we have an integrated Toslink and Alpico output, which works in conjunction with our audio and that ALC 1150 HD audio codec. And we support DTS Ultra 2 PC, as well as DTS Connect, which gives us the ability to do real-time audio encoding from two-channel all the way up to 7.1, plus uses a lower compression ratio and in a higher encoding rate. So really nice software package that we have there. Uh, from there, we have a single Intel Gigabit Ethernet port, and that, of course, is using the latest generation of Intel's iSeries network controller. Best performance, lowest CPUization, and the most robust management options for you guys out there that are network tweakers. So awesome NIC that we have on board. Uh, really low power consumption, very impressive specifications in terms of what you can do with it. Plus, it works with our network eye control software so that you can go ahead and manage and prioritize quality of service for programs like streaming, downloading, web page, anything like that. And lastly, of course, we have all our HD audio connections uh, for 2.1 all the way up to multi-channel configurations. So that wraps it up here in terms of what we have on the back out. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back with a brand new addition to the thermal radar design. Okay, guys, so lastly right here, we have an entirely new addition to the thermal armor system, not the actual thermal, uh, thermal radar, as I, I previously noted there. Um, so the cool thing about this is it's an entire back plate, which helps us to go ahead and eliminate any type of uh, rigidity issues or torsion issues that you sometimes have with large, complex heat sinks that use back plates where sometimes you can over torque uh, the board, and that can affect the actual traces in terms of helping to sometimes create instability or other problems. Now, we always use a super high quality PCB that minimizes likelihood of any type of torsion or stress to the board, uh, but this effectively helps to almost eliminate it entirely. In addition to that, of course, it also helps to serve as a partial heat sink uh, because it does make direct contact with the MOSFET, so the hottest part of the, the VRM. So that helps to go ahead and pull out some of the heat from that section and dissipate it here on the back plane, especially if you're using a chassis uh, where you have a front, uh, excuse me, top level intake or you have a back 120 millimeter fan, you can get some great additional cooling uh, for this actual board in itself. And of course, you get the benefit that it helps to mitigate you having to make contact with the board itself itself, where you can sometimes kick, uh, nick or cut your fingers, things along those lines. Plus, it, it looks really cool. Um, so that gives you a little bit of an update in terms of the total uh, thermal armor design, including the brand new fortifier. And keep in mind that everything that we have touched on, including the fortifier, will be an option uh, that is available for the Griffin Micro ATX based SKU. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap things up. All right, guys, so wrapping things up, we've, got, we've given you a quick overview on uh, some of the new features, functions, and uh, overall layout in terms of our Sabertooth Z87, as well as our brand new Griffin Z87 series motherboard. So as I noted before, all the features, functions, all the things that you expect from a tough series motherboard apply to both of them. The only thing to keep in mind is that the Griffin Micro ATX SKU will actually not come included default with the actual thermal armor system, which would include the actual fortifier, as well as those optional temp sensors and the advanced dust effect fender protection mechanisms. Uh, so for that, if you guys are interested, we will be selling in this optional armor accessory kit, which you can go ahead and purchase uh, from any number of retailers or e-tailers to go ahead and uh, throw onto your Griffin base board to go ahead and enable the full thermal armor design. So with that noted, as always, you know, one of the biggest questions we get is, you know, how does this uh, lay out in terms of where the rest of our boards are at? And it's pretty straightforward. If you guys are looking for a great, reliable board with outstanding component quality, with a key focus in terms of having extended reliability and validation done on the board, as well as uh, a real nice feature set that's really geared towards people that are looking for advanced monitoring, advanced cooling, as well as even for users that are looking to overclock and push their system, even though that's not necessarily something we call out for our Tough Series motherboards. Uh, either the Griffin SKU as well as the Sabertooth SKU are going to complement you well. So as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, you know, any type of feedback, we'd love to see it here on the YouTube page. Feel free to go ahead and drop it on the inbox as well. Or you can go ahead and make sure and hit us up at our North American Facebook page or our North American uh, Twitter page. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure and like the video. And as always, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe as well.